Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have another story from Japanese Fairy World, stories from the Wonder Lore of Japan by William Elliot Griffiths. And this story is Yorimasa, the Brave Archer, where we hear the tale of, you guessed it, Yorimasa and his conquests. Jenzen Yorimasa was a brave warrior and a very useful man who lived more than 8,000 moons ago. On account of his valor and skill in the use of the bow, he was called to Kyoto and promoted to be chief guard of the imperial palace. At that time, the emperor Naruhito could not sleep at night because his rest was disturbed by a frightful beast which scared away even the sentinels in armor who stood on guard. This dreadful beast had the wings of a bird, the body and claws of a tiger, the head of a monkey, a serpent's tail, and the crackling scales of a dragon. It came after night upon the roof of the palace and howled and scratched so dreadfully that the poor Mikado, losing all rest, grew weak and thin. None of the guards dare face it in hand-to-hand combat, and none had skill enough to hit it with an arrow in the dark though several of the imperial corps of archers had tried again and again. When Yorimasa received his appointment, he strung his bow carefully, and carefully, honing its steel-headed arrows, stored his quiver and resolved to mount guard that night with his favorite retainer. It chanced to be a stormy night. The lightning was very vivid, and Kaminari, the thunder god, was beating all his drums. The wind swirled round frightfully, as though Fudin, the wind god, was emptying all his bags. Toward midnight, the falcon eye of Yorimasa saw, during a flash of lightning, an awful beast sitting on the devil's tile at the tip of the ridge pole, on the northeast end of the roof. He bade his retainer have a torch of straw and twigs ready to light at a moment's notice, to loosen his blade, and wet its hilt-pin, while he fitted the notch of his best arrow into the silk cord of his bow. Keeping his eyes strained, he pretty soon saw the glare of now one eye, now two eyes, as the beast with swaying head crept along the great roof to place on the eaves directly under the Mikado's sleeping room. There, It stopped. This was Yorimasa's opportunity. Aiming about a foot to the right of where he saw the eye glare, he drew his yard-length shaft clear back to his shoulder and let fly. A dull thud, a frightful howl, a heavy bump on the ground and the writhing of some creature among the pebbles told in a few seconds that the shaft had struck flesh. The next instant, Yorimasa's retainer rushed out with blazing torch and joined battle with his dirk. Seizing the beast by the neck, he quickly dispatched him by cutting his throat. Then they flayed the monster, and the next morning the hide was shown to his majesty. All congratulated Yorimasa on his valor and marksmanship. Many young men, some nobles and warriors, begged to become his pupils in archery. The Mikado ordered a noble of very high rank to present Yorimasa a famous sword, named Sishinoo, King of Wild Boars, and to give him a lovely maid of honor named Ayami to wife. And so the brave and the fair were married, and to this day the fame of Yorimasa is like the Ume Takematsu, Plum blossom, bamboo and pine, fragrant, green, and ever during. And that is the Japanese folktale of Yorimasa, the brave archer, in which we see the bravery, the skill, and cunning of Yorimasa, but also what I seem to think of as 
the unsung bravery of Zurimasa's retainer. After all, a not-quite-dead, very likely very upset, writhing night beast on the floor is... It certainly would scare me enough to not charge forward with my dirk to slit its throat. That seems to take uh, a bit of bravery as well. This is Dan Schulz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>